Hey, thanks for helping me reach 500 subscribers, less than 500 to go. The Final Fantasy series has some of my most favourite games. I've already done a tier list on the games themselves, but now I'm looking at the mini games inside them. I don't think this has been done before, so I've had to make my own tier list. I've picked out 15 mini games which I think are worthy of being on this list. I'm not going to include tiny little things or activities like FF7's CPR minigame. Like I give a shit. So let me know what your favourite mini games are in the comments. Uh, hopefully Final Fantasy 16 will have some mini games I can add to this list. But for now, let's start. Final Fantasy VIII's Triple Triad. Starting with a good one. This is an easy S rank for me. I love this card game and I'm pretty sure I've spent hundreds of hours dueling everyone and completing the card collection. No matter where I was, I would put Eight Story on pause and get completely addicted to Triple Triad. Uh, and there's just something about its snazzy music, Shuffle or Boogie, and it makes me want to play just one more match every time. Uh, what makes Triple Triad extra special for me is being able to use Guardian Forces to convert cards into useful rare items or crafting materials or magic. Triple Triad can be used as an alternative form of progression for making your character stronger. I've got one nitpick though, and that's after playing in a few different regions across the world, you'll spread new rules. Some of these rules really suck, like random, which doesn't let you choose which cards you'll play with. But overall, it's still so good, it is S tier for me. G-Bag from 7 and 7 Remake. Man, playing Final Fantasy 7 for the first time, storming the Shinra building was already epic. But when we got to escape on a motorbike with the entire Shinra army chasing after us, my mind was blown. This was one of the big moments I was looking forward to in the remake, and it actually delivered. Come on, you see the piece of shit we're driving here? Says the 300 pound sack of it. Hey! We even get to fight Mortable on the bike this time around. I mean, it was awesome when he crashes into you at the end of the highway in the original, but it's even better in the remake. Uh, it's a pretty simple mini game, you just need to swing your sword to the left and right to take out enemies, and there's a special long range attack added in the remake. Uh, everyone's health bars are on screen, and I really like that the damage your party receives during this mini game carries over into the Mortable boss fight at the end. I love G Bike, A tier. Hey, I'm trying to grow the channel. I'm trying to reach 1,000 subs, so any help would be greatly appreciated. Thanks. Next up, Final Fantasy VII Squats. While there wasn't that much to this in the original, what, you, you just needed to out-squat a bodybuilder to win a wig, so you could cross-dress as a woman to progress the story. You serious? But this gets a lot more fleshed out in Seven Remake, with a few optional extra challenges and rewards. It's a goofy minigame, but I love the music that accompanies this in the remake. It's the battle theme, remixed, and it turns this goofy minigame into some adrenaline-filled epic battle. Pretty good. I'm squatting down to C tier. Final Fantasy IX's Jump Rope Skipping. Oh man, another really nostalgic minigame for me. I remember really going at this as a kid, but it was super frustrating when you'd screw up and have to start over. It didn't help the tempo of the skipping increased over time, and that sudden change in speed might catch you out. There were rewards for all the way to 1,000 consecutive jumps. There's a few rare cards you can get early, and a title in the form of a key item. Don't really need any of these rewards, but it's a decent little side activity that really adds the charm of Nang's world. Especially at the start of the game when you're wandering Alexandria with Vivi. It's a decent little addition to the world. C tier. Okay, Final Fantasy X's Blitzball. Man, on paper, underwater magic football sounds like a really fun minigame. But I always struggled a bit to get really into Blitzball's gameplay. Oh, he'll feel that one in the morning. It is a bit janky. Like it transitions into almost turn-based gameplay whenever you come close to another player, or when you shoot or pass. But I still really appreciate this minigame. It's a big part of Final Fantasy X, and you can tell a lot of effort has gone into it. Uh, just a pity it didn't kick off like Triple Triad. In fact, my favourite part of Blitzball is recruiting characters from the story and setting up your own personal team. All right, back to practice. The developers might share my opinion because Ten2 doubled down on this side of Blitzball and it became all about being a Blitzball manager instead of actually playing. I'm going to give it a, a B tier. Final Fantasy Nang's Chocobo Hot and Cold. This is my most favourite iteration of Chocobo minigames across all of Final Fantasy. So you start off digging up a few treasures in Chocobo Forest, 
Eventually you'll dig up chocographs and the pictures on them will lead you to hidden treasures to dig up on the world map, as well as unlocking colour upgrades for your chocobo. There's plenty of really useful items and equipment, but it's so satisfying getting new chocobo colours. Each colour allows your chocobo to reach new locations, dig sites, treasures, and eventually chocobo paradise and its optional super endgame boss, Ozma. It can get a bit grindy and your thumb can get a bit sore from spamming the dig button, but there is a satisfying little progression system with your chocobo's digging skills levelling up too. Also, those chocographs kind of returned in Final Fantasy XIV as treasure maps, which are pretty fun, little honourable mention. But hot and cold is all hot. S rank. Final Fantasy VII's Shooting Coaster or Speed Square. It's a roller coaster on the real shooter at the Gold Saucer. It's alright, it's fun to check out, it's charming even if the 3D models haven't aged that well, but it is pretty difficult to precisely aim the reticule with the analog sticks. It costs 10 GP to play and the rewards are a bit naff. There's two exclusive weapons, one being an umbrella for Aerith, but, but they're not really that great. I'm wondering if we'll see this return in 7 Rebirth. It's already returned in Final Fantasy XIV, and when it's available it's great for earning some easy gold saucer points. I was originally going to give this a C tier, but going through all the negatives now, it might be D tier. It's between the two. I'll squeeze it into C, it was, it was kind of fun. Tetra Master from Final Fantasy IX. Alright, if it wasn't for Triple Triad, this would be S tier. No, actually I think this is still S tier, but I do love Triple Triad more. That maybe needs to go in S plus? Uh... Okay, Tetra Master. It's a really fun card game, simple as that. Uh, it, it's even integrated into the story where you get the chance to take part in a Tetra Master tournament. So, why do I prefer its Triple Triad to Nang's Tetra Master? I touched on this earlier. Triple Triad cards have more value. They can be converted into useful things. And I personally find Tetra Master less fun to play. I mean, it's still fun, but the numbers and letters on cards determine a card's strength and weaknesses. It's deceptively complicated to fully understand. I've forgotten what all the letters and numbers stand for, and the game doesn't do a great job of teaching you. But even still, S tier, I still had a lot of fun getting addicted to this. Final Fantasy VII Submarine Missions Man, after going back and doing that one submarine mission you've got to do for the story, I've realised it's a joke. You can complete it in a few seconds, the enemy ship starts right in front of you. Thankfully the arcade machine in the Gold Saucer has four other missions as well, with a few decent rewards, but it's a pretty decent source of GP as well. I remember farming some of the easier missions for 20 GP a shot. I think the submarine gameplay is decent, I like the aesthetics and effort that's gone into trying to simulate an actual submarine experience, I like the UI and you can track the landscapes and mines on sonar. C tier, decent. Final Fantasy X's Chocobo Training at the Calmlands are awesome, and I remember running these chocobo time trials to get a perfect score to get Titus' ultimate weapon. <laughs> and these chocobo time trials kind of suck. You've got to collect balloons and there's all these annoying seagulls you've got to avoid. Get hit by one of them and you're screwed. It's one of the more frustrating minigames. D tier. At least Final Fantasy VII's chocobo racing and breeding did it much better. At the Gold Saucer you can bet on chocobos or raise your own and race them. Then breed the best ones in hopes of getting different coloured chocobos. Uh, you can get access to new locations on the world map with certain chocobos. There's even a secret island at the corner of the map that requires a golden chocobo to reach. I think that one had the Knights of the Round summon material. Pretty badass reward. Chocobo races were pretty fun. I remember there was that one little trick. If you held down all the shoulder buttons, you could regenerate your stamina. Sometimes you'd race against Joe and his black chocobo. It's great, but you know what? I think Nang did chocobos better with chocobo hot and cold, but there wasn't any racing. It's... it's between S and A for me. Gonna go with A. Final Fantasy VII Fort Condor. I like Fort Condor. It's a bit of real-time strategy. I'm always ready for a round of Fort Condor! In 7 you just defend the fort from invading Shinra troops. You have to use your hard-earned guild to hire mercenaries to fight. It's perfectly functional but a bit janky and slow-paced. It gets quite expensive and it's not that rewarding until you have to do it for a mandatory battle in Disc 2. I don't want to spoil that for new remake players though. Uh, Integrate actually takes a new spin on Fort Condor and it's a little board game you can play people at. Say, is that Fort Condor I see over there? You play? Both sides need to defend their condors while sending mercenaries down the two lanes. A tiny bit mobile-like. This is pretty awesome. 
It is genuinely fun and you can get a bit competitive. Remixed music rocks and you can customise your own deck of mercenaries you've unlocked. I just need more of it. I hope we'll get to see more of Fort Condor in the next part of Final Fantasy VII's remake, A tier. Final Fantasy IX's Blackjack. It's just regular Blackjack with a few cards themed on summons. It was weird, you had to unlock Blackjack by a password or series of buttons during Nang's credits. It's an extra little minigame, you know, why not? But why not just have Blackjack integrated into the world? Well, I guess we already had Tetra Master. D tier. Final Fantasy VII Snowboarding. Man, this was cool. You could play this in the Gold Saucer or snowboard down the mountain on the way to the crater. Uh, there's different directions you can go that will take you through different track segments and lead you to different places. Controls and turning was pretty tight. It, it takes a bit of practice to get used to, but it's cool. Grinded my fair share of snowboarding in the Gold Saucer. B tier. And the last one is more of a special mention, Final Fantasy XIV's Gold Saucer. This is the theme park based on Seven's Gold Saucer and it's full of mini games and prizes to earn. Uh, lots of returning ones, Triple Triad to that coaster shooter, Chocobo Racing, and some new stuff like Jumping Puzzles, Lord of Vermilion. That's where you can use your minions you've collected in a little strategy game. There's special limited time events, gates too. Um, my favourite ones are where everyone is on a giant platform and you've got to try and avoid Yojimbo or Typhon's attacks. It is such an awesome addition to the world of an MMORPG, and I hope to see more mini games added to this in the future. A tier. Okay, those are my favourite Final Fantasy minigames. Let me know what yours are in the comments, and peace.